I like to call these two tests smoke detectors. Just like the smoke detector in your home, if it goes off, you know you need to check something out. Probably check the batteries first because they may be old, but maybe you left the toaster down too long and it's burning, or heaven forbid, there really is a something smoldering in your house. But a smoke detector is an early warning. It's not a call to urgent action necessarily. So if your smoke alarm goes off, you don't call 911 as the very first thing. You go check out your house. And then if you find real smoke, you're gonna call 911. But the smoke detectors do alert you to, hey, keep looking. Something's not right. And that's where these next two tests come in, which I like to call the fire alarms. These two tests absolutely have been shown to be predictive of heart attacks and strokes in the quote, near future. Now, what does that mean? Well, it could mean today. It could mean next week. It could mean over the next weeks, months, or even few years. But they are a call to urgent action. If you get either one of these tests to be positive, then we know that you have active, vulnerable plaque somewhere in your system. And if it happens to be a brain artery, stroke is the risk. If it happens to be a heart artery, heart attack is the risk. And guess what? 4% of healthy people have one of the two fire alarms ringing, which means 8% of people, one out of 12 of the folks that are watching me right now, one out of 12 of you has one or the other of the fire alarms ringing and it's not been detected on any other test that you've done. It certainly doesn't show up on a stress test. You can have fire alarms ringing past that stress test and still have your heart attack. That's the point. That's why that's a myth about stress testing. But 4% have one or the other. Let me talk just briefly about how those two, why they're so predictive. The first test, this lipoprotein associated phospholipase A2, we abbreviate that PLAQ2. That's released by the white blood cells that are trying to chew up the plaque. The plaque in the artery wall is seen as an invader. It's seen as dangerous. And so the immune system, the white blood cells say, let's attack it, let's kill it. And they digest that plaque in part by using this plaque two chemical. Well, guess what? That just turns it into a toxic stew. I've used the analogy that it's like a pimple. It's not a pimple, but it's very much like a pimple that gets all of those toxic juices in there. And that's what can burst and rupture just like a real pimple. The myeloperoxid on the other hand, is another digestive enzyme that gets released from the white blood cells. But these are the white blood cells that are floating through the bloodstream that are in the channel. And when they see plaque, they stick to it and they release myeloperoxidase, which number one, kills bacteria by releasing bleach but it also kills the cells lining the artery. And so now we have an attack on the inside wall of the artery and underneath the lining of the artery. That's what these two fire alarms are telling us. If either one is there, we know that there's a much, much, much higher near-term risk for heart attack and stroke. If they're both there, it's an even higher risk. When Ford and I see these in our practice, we know that that's an urgent call. We've got to literally put out the fire with lots of different strategies. So the inflammation tests are foundational. 